Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello, a and listeners, all of you out there. Uh, it's a great day in the world of Nintendo and another Nintendo podcast because we get to talk about Nintendo's latest direct. Um, I'm here with Austin Cummings. Hey, Matt. Uh, Jordan Weiner. Hey, everyone. And Danny Tortelli. Hey, y'all. Okay, so we are here to talk about the Nintendo Direct that just dropped. This was a full-size 50-minute Nintendo Direct, which was pretty exciting. It's been a while. We've other, otherwise, we've gotten some, like, some kind of like shadow drops or just like quick release like reveals, like with Paper Mario, or um, uh, I guess like we you know we've heard about Pokemon Snap uh, just kind of through a YouTube video, but nothing as put together and curated and as long as this. That is true enough, and you know what we did not hear about today new Pokemon Snap. Very exciting, but yeah, it was fun to have a 50 minute direct. It is February 17th. As Matt said, 2021, we made it 2021, and things are looking up. Most of all, Toma, uh, Toma Dachi live? <laughs> to- no, no, me Tomo. Oh, no, Tomo, me- the surprise <laughs> announcement we all went crazy for. No, it's me Metopia. What the hell is me Tomo? Me Tomo was the app on the, the phone. iOS app. Oh, mm-hmm. God. Uh, yeah, me Tomo. Yeah, you forget the name of it because it's so ubiquitous now with everyone's like a phone experience. Everyone just pops into Mitomo each day that's on this dead game, send each other a gift, update their yeah. me. So that was the, the, that was Nintendo's first uh, app release when they when they ventured into the market. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're and... here to review it today. <laughs> <laughs> Four stars. Okay, Danny, I understand you've pulled together a little bit of a game for us to play. Going over the releases as announced in the Nintendo Direct today. Danny, what do you know about this game you made for us? Tell us, please. So the game I made is everyone going around saying of the 24 games announced, um, we're doing, uh, I, I think it was called Clown or frown, mm-hmm. and then what was the third option? Right, yeah. As by AMP? Mm-hmm. Well, it's not that. Oh no! <laughs> it's, are you down to clown? No, it's it's clown or down. You're down. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> okay, it's a throwback. You're either down. You're gonna get the thing you love it, or clown. What a goof! You don't want it. <laughs> Simple. You like to look at it and, and laugh at it. But you don't want it. Right. You love to see it out of the circus. You love to see it with an elephant. Juggling things <laughs> and creeping people out. So here we go. Down or clown, uh, uh, Danny's going to take us through this list, and we're each going to uh, give our thoughts. Is this a clown, yeah. or are we, are we down to play from day one? So these are all the games and or announcements of some sort from the Direct today. So first up, uh, right out the gate, where the new Smash player reveals, and it was Xenoblade Chronicle 2's um, Pyre. And I I don't know the series, but apparently this person can also be Mithra. So there's Mm kind of like two players in one sort of thing, like the Echo characters. Uh, So Pyre and Mithra are coming to Smash. Two of the worst character designs I ever saw. And I've played some of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and I frequently bounce off because I look at these poor poor character models and i think i can't be complicit in this any longer and also the game's so long we have pyra uh like fire and so pyra is special she is a sword and fire and also she I'm turns sorry. into a green yeah you got it it's like a it's like a throwback to fee love it wow. Skyward Skyward sword. Skyward sword. <laughs> mm-hmm. a lot of sword My girls sword girls thing. rise up don't bury, don't bury the lead <laughs> and so, um, in any event, she's an adventurer that Rex, who's the protagonist of that game, they go on this adventure. I thought the trailer was very fun. I really did appreciate the bait and switch. They held out so long before revealing what was going on. I was very fearful. It was another Xenoblade Chronicles 2 DLC, but we dodged a bullet. Let me say this, though. Let me get this on the record. I'm surprised they're doing another character that alternates between forms, because we know Zelda and Sheik two separate characters in ultimate i'm wondering if it just made 
that character just more unique and, and like that this it's not really a second character as much as it's just a different move set right for sure and, for sure but just but, that they you know there was a big outcry previously because people were like oh i like zelda right like playing zelda but she doesn't have a down b because it turned to sheik who i don't use and so they made him my, characters danny that's my complaint with charizard with pokemon trainer because in the last smash i would wreck uh with charizard with that down b uh and now every time i do it i turn back into squirtle or ivysaur love my squirtle or but no one loves ivysaur and so i hear you i hear you let's talk about the character design because if you're throwing down what i think you're throwing down it is it is these are some very uh maybe over hyper gratuitously designed yeah characters. like do we really need another redhead we have roy god roy's the best roy's my main <laughs> I agree. Infringing on the Roy, infringing on the Roy uh, space. I have to say, I know nothing about Xenoblade. And I also, at first, I had that split second of, oh, no, another sword fighter. But after watching it, I was like, I'm down to try this character. This seems cool to me. And I and I pre this direct was always another one of those another sword fighter from a series I've never played before. And this one, I was like, I'm in. I'll try it. Looks good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like the sword bar is already set so long with Sephiroth, but now <laughs> anything goes. Now the, you're the human is the sword. Think about it, 2021. Danny, <laughs> what do we got next? Next, we've got Fall Guys coming to Switch. PlayStation Plus game. It came out both PC and PS4 at the same time. And it's been a big hit. Very fun. Very silly. So totally fun. Yeah, this game was made for Switch. I mean, it, it's it, it's kind of hilarious how long it took, and it almost feels like it missed the like the window of like quarantine cooped up multiplayer madness. But I still think it's going to do do great. I know uh, I for sure am down. But at the same time, Fortnite has done very well on Switch, as has Rocket League, and those came out much later after the main game really blew up. So. Uh, Hopefully it's another hit. I, I really have enjoyed it on PlayStation, but I will clown it heavily on Switch just as I likely had my fill, but very fun. Jordan, any thought for you on those? I won't have any thoughts until like game number uh, like 19 or something. Good. I was here mostly for the, <laughs> for the Zelda uh, information as I'm a very <laughs> targeted Nintendo fan. So got me as like mildly intrigued to not interested <laughs> in all for the next several games on the list, just in case viewers were really holding on. I'm knowing my opinion. I, and uh, that's, that's where I stand. It's cute and friendly and silly. And also makes you want to like throw your controller at the screen. Um, competitive kind of thing. Uh, so I'm down. Yeah. I haven't played it yet. I'm really excited for this. All right. Next we have the outer wilds, not the outer worlds. Mm -hmm. Cause that's already on switch. The outer wild. I will say this one did intrigue me and i've heard good things about it i think i'm putting this one in the category of i would love to watch somebody else play it because i want to also uncover the mystery but i would find it stressful to personally play so this is one i'm gonna watch my boyfriend play which is a pretty high ranking for me i would say it's a proxy down it's a proxy down we respect that um, <laughs> i like the concept i like i like i'm i guess i'm a maybe mo probably more of a clown and, and the reason why is i and this is actually a larger conversation, but I I have it downloaded on Xbox through Game Pass. And I feel like in a lot of ways, having access to games like this that are coming out on Switch later, which are like, oh, that's per that's a perfect game for Switch. But like, why why am I gonna go? Why would I buy it on Switch when I can play it for free as part of the service? Even looking at okay, the Ninja Gaiden, like now I'm jumping around the Ninja Gaiden collection or Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, those are totally fun games in their own right, but they're going to be inexpensive individually on other consoles that will run them, these older games, more smoothly. So it is a hard sell unless you don't have access to those other platforms because it'll also likely be more expensive out of the gate as we've seen on Switch. Danny, what are the next few games? Uh, so next is Samurai Warriors 5. Is coming to Switch. We're all clowning. Not next. a series. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, next is an oldie, uh, Famicom Detective Club. Visual novel, murder mysteries. They are Nintendo-developed games. 
from the 80s. That first time they're coming to the West, kind of fun, but I would, w- I am going to fight the temptation to check it out until I have some. There's a lot of really good visual novel games, and in this set of games, also that game from the Danganronpa uh, developers, they have that new Another Mystery game. There are a lot of modern games. I wonder how this one obviously gets a huge visual overhaul, but I do wonder as far as the mechanics and story. All right, and after Famicom Detective is Legend of Mana coming to Switch. Uh, this one on anyone's yay? It looks great. It looks good. There's a lot of yeah. now uh, sort of Secret Mana, Seiken Setsu games that are on uh, that are on the Switch between the remake of Trials of Mana last year and then the collection of the first three games is also on Switch. So there's a lot of ways to play this series, which it's cool that as far as like the archives of having these games available, that this one is there too. Next, we saw Monster Hunter Rise, which continues to look good. There's already a demo available. I'm impressed. If it runs as well as it seems like it is, it's almost the best argument out of anything we saw today against the Switch Pro, which of course we didn't see today, uh, in that Mm -hmm. it looks like it, it looks visually very impressive and these are big areas, monsters and multiplayer. So... I'm excited. I will be down. Yeah, it it sounds or it looks it looks great. I know that just from other outlets and people who've been previewing the game that's you know who are Monster Hunter fans, like it's supposed to be a much more approachable like Monster mm-hmm. Hunter game um for people who may not want to, you know, pour in the hour, you know, hundreds of hours grinding and and foraging and I always enjoy I will play the Monster Hunter like the main campaign and the world had a bit of a story. I never get super into the long-term grinding and upgrading, but lots of folks do. This one does look good. It probably is the biggest thing to come out on Switch for the foreseeable future. Uh, the very next one, Mario Golf uh, Super Rush. I am I am excited for this. I haven't played Mario Golf literally since the N64. So if nothing else, just to dive back into that, it was like same thing for me with like Mario Party. Before I got the Switch, I hadn't played one since uh, the N64. So this is one I'm definitely interested in jumping in just to see where it's gone. Jordan, you figured you were not alone. Maybe some some thought there too. I've never played any uh, Mario Golf at all, um, so I'm intrigued. Although I agree with um, we were we had a group uh, text going, so we were all watching the direct, and I agreed with Matt's comment that visually it did feel like the game left a little bit. Uh, to be to be desired but um it looks fun one thing i'm down for certainly i love the fun like sports outfits that they're getting going on that is fun like i liked him and mario tennis for the switch that they mario had his very sporty gear not every character had more than one costume item except for a, a couple ones such as mario and luigi but i liked that they did give him a little something there i think coming from tennis i liked tennis the story was very generic. I was glad it existed, but it was definitely a far cry from the Camelot uh, golf. Yeah, I would, Mario Tennis to me was pretty disappointing. Um, and I know it's been actually updated a lot since its release um, by Camelot and just like the, I don't know, I know, some of the mechanics and just there's like new players and more to do. Um, but I thought it was going to be like more engaging and competitive and easy to kind of master uh or just jump into than it actually was and i played mario golf uh world tour on the 3ds and that was that was very popular um right. you know it was the first mario golf game that had an online feature and online tournaments and playing with friends through the nintendo online network or whatever it was called at that yeah. time um and so this is i'm super excited my my brothers love play real golf and they also love playing pga and stuff but all of all three of us were like really excited to jump on this together in the future um specifically like the speed golf mechanic is hilarious just when they showed those four characters teeing off all at the same time and then they show the characters running like i was like what wait what it's like an open world game why are they like like they don't have a cart or they don't just appear at where the ball landed and i love i love that um and interesting about this i spoke with my brother um and his his favorite thing about it was he was like i'm glad they had the motion control because 
for me, if without it, I would have, I would have said, nah, I'll pass. But, and I, I took that a little differently. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily as into that. And for him, he was like, well, I play these golf games on, you know, like other golf games on different platforms. And this is like one of the things that would make this fun and unique for me. And so I thought that was interesting. I don't know for you all, would you play with swinging a golf club? Yeah, no, I was say I'd try it, you know, definitely uh, in this this world of just sitting at home a lot, uh, anything to get up and moving. Um, I would give it a go. But if after a while it sem- seemed clunky or like like the joy kinds weren't as accurate as I'd hope, then, you know, switch to, to regular old handheld. And then I think, Jordan, you had some some thoughts, too. I'd absolutely not play if <laughs> if you could only uh, if you could only do it with the joy cons. Spoiler alert to later on in this podcast, but I have some very strong (laughs) opinions about the ability to press buttons and not have to physically uh, use my Joy-Con to mimic a real movement. If I was good at real movements, I would not be playing video games um i I, um, I play video games because gamer tank baby doesn't get more gamer than that we love it this was a major barrier to entry for me for the wii it's like i'm not i'm not here for this i Mm -hmm. definitely bought my own version of twilight princess on the gamecube did not use the family version on the Mm -hmm. wii just for this reason very good Mm -hmm. i like that defiance too even with your family owning the twilight princess i it really is like casting your vote in that case like when the polls close they're like well we got three sales on the gamecube version that came out months later and jordan's there (laughs) ballot in hand saying yes left-handed link yeah yes (laughs) um okay this is like little high school me too my own money Mm -hmm. my own money to buy that game by myself we love that just to get thank you we're here to say today thank you that's why I stopped playing Ring Fit Adventure. I couldn't just play on handheld. It was really yeah. Difficult. I was like, yeah, Jordan, what? you're the only one who got further than us in Ring Fit Adventure. That's true. That's true. I did almost be Ring Fit Adventure. That okay, was, cancel that's, her. That's an exception. Right. That's an exception. <laughs> let's let's jump to No More Heroes three. I know, mm-hmm. Austin, you've got some things to say. <laughs> Love No More Heroes. One and two came out a few months ago on the Switch. We knew this game was announced uh, years ago, and there was the. Uh, Travis Strikes Again game that was more arcade-ish and had some fun story concepts, but honestly felt pretty half-baked, even though I, I played it through out of, uh, you know, love for the series. And I love the zaniness of this. Um, absolutely. A lot of fun minigame elements. Really excited to see the characters in the world come back. Honestly adore No More Heroes 1. One of my favorite games of all time, easily. Um, even going back to it now, it's still so charming and bizarre the um so glad to see this comes out the summer that's an exciting surprise as well i hope it sells and when will we get travis in smash he's got a me fighter and he's got to be grateful for that boo how many how many do we only have one character left yes oh so it's travis or waluigi <laughs> it's not what travis happens. And it's definitely Waluigi. I think, <laughs> how much do we, we want to say right here, A&P guarantee, what are the, what do you guys think are the odds? What's the percent chance, totally impossible to ever prove, that Waluigi is going to be the final character? I've, I've said this before in the podcast, but I'll say it again here. Is I, I, it, it would be very Nintendo to do the bait and switch. They do that Pika all the time, like in all types of different ways. And I think what they would do is they would have some weird, like video, just like they did today, mm-hmm. where that's a good point. While Luigi's in the background as a as a assist trophy, and then he's like, "F this, I'm getting in the fight," and then he's just like, "Wow!" And then he bursts through, and, <laughs> and then, then it gets, but then he gets like decked by another character, and <laughs> yeah. then he pops Crash Bandicoot, and he's like, "Wow!" Oh, and then, oh, no. no. <laughs> yes, that'd be, you know, so good. That'd be so, amazing. But, I mean, I would love to watch Twitter at that point, but I wouldn't mm-hmm. want to, you know, be in it. But then if they did that, it would be like when they did the last one with, like, you know, DDD and uh, King K. Rule, and then Banjo and Kazooie. Like, they would, and it was Duck Hunt Dog, like, but it was also still Banjo and Kazooie. I bet we could see that for mm-hmm. this, too. Where, like, then Waluigi's, like, a free extra character or whatever. And he's just, oh, like, okay. trash. He's, like, nerfed, nerfed to heck and back. He's, like, so bad. And then Nintendo gets the last laugh. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. So, okay. Metopia game came out in 3DS, came out December of 2016. So very, very late in the 3DS life cycle. And as Wait. such, I, yep. It was 
free, right? No, Wasn't it free? No, no, it was very expensive. It was forty dollars for sure. Vtopia? Uh, yeah, definitely. Wait, it, well, hold on one second. What was what was the game that came You're on? You're thinking the 3- of Find Me, which was free on Street Pass. Yeah, that's this. That's this is what that feels like to me. It, it feels- is like that, but this was a a much larger. And he calls paid himself a game fan. on 3DS where it was a, a, a physical release where you took Mies and you did an RPG quest. Apparently the RPG mechanics were decent and similar to other games like Tomodachi Life. You customized the Mies and kind of gave them little personalities. It was very yeah. zany in its humor. People liked it, but basically I, I always enjoy the Nintendo Switch subreddit. I went on there after the direct and this people were blowing up the, how excited they were about this game. I'm sure a lot of people on subreddit are young and probably had an experience, you know, maybe their first me experience was with the 3DS or with games like this. For me, it felt really long in the tooth by the time 2016 rolled around to still be interested or like actively making me's of anyone that I knew or, you know, Anakin or Jesus or whatever types of other me's were on my Nintendo Wii. And so the, um, with this game, I was looking and everyone's like, oh, I love this. It's huge. Like, maybe we'll get another Tomodachi life. I was like, this is wild. I passed up on this game. Is it actually well liked? So I went to go check out the Metacritic. And it's sitting in the mid 60s. And many, many outlets did not even review it. I'm sure it sold terribly on 3DS. IGN doesn't even have a review for it. Game Informer was really the only reputable outlet that reviewed it it seems, and gave it a, a 7.5. So it's far from like a beloved game. I'm sure it's cute, but I can't imagine making Miis now. I know you can do it on the Switch, but I can't imagine. In 2021, we have a global pandemic, and we have a, a crazy freezing temperatures across the nation. Are people really ready in whenever this comes out to sit down and make Miis with their family? I'm, I just, it I seems mean, so dated. And it's 50 bucks or whatever. It's like, ah. Oh. Nintendo. Yeah, it is. It is expensive, um, but people people are excited. I mean, they're so excited on the subreddit. Filthy excited. They're clowning. They're downing. They're downing clowns. They're clowning downs. It's disgusting in there, and they want that Metopia. I feel like I peaked at like making Professor Snape me do step aerobics at Wii Fit, and that was what a, over a decade ago. For the record, it's not that hard to make a me on on the Switch. Saying it's hard, I just like, I think, look, if this game had come out, let's say, in a different type of launch, a different type of launch, okay? And it comes out at the end of the Wii life. I could see that being a fun final adventure with all of the me's we made back on the Wii, right? When we were all in high school. And at that time, it would be like a fun send off for those characters, adventure with this great ragtag crew of me's made at you know from snow days and high school events past where we you know had all these fun creations that but now it just feels like i would have to go back and artificially make all of them i refuse anyway that's my story i'm can- canceling utopia <laughs> i'm sorry i just want to say this this would be a really great game for for kids and their parents to play put your put your dad make your dad you think the villain. nintendo switch is for kids and parents matt no it's for, oh. it's for low 30-somethings who make a podcast and send it to their mom. I have a lot. Of, I feel a compulsion to buy frequently. I wish I had more self-control in many ways. I'm glad I don't have a physical release, like, compulsion that I would buy both Hades digitally and physical, because I'm, I'm not going, going there. I was going to say, because you want that book. You want that, that collector's book. There's a, there's, a, <clears throat> there's a book involved? Is it still available for pre-order now? It's not necessarily a book, but yeah, it's it's like the it's the art, um, which I mean, I, I do love the art style. Of yeah, those I'll are the only that. books I read, so that's preferable. Okay, let's yeah, keep moving. Fair. All right, the... so we got Animal Crossing coming out mm-hmm. with their Mario collaboration items. This one I can say may pull me back in for a little bit into Animal Crossing. I and just so, I was going to say this real quick about Animal Crossing. Uh, uh, Pav at, 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 in the uh, festival uh, event that happened on President's Day, um, or when it, no, when did it happen? Not President's Day. What, uh, yesterday. Um, what was yesterday? It happened yesterday. Was yesterday Monday? 
Oh, was, maybe so it was Monday so into yesterday. Yeah, Monday yeah, was Washington's was, birthday. It's President's Day. There we go. Yeah. I, but yesterday was uh, start of Mardi Gras, wasn't it? Is that what it was also for? Also the start of Mardi Gras. Um, it was awesome. It was a great event. Uh, it was hilarious. And I think Pav is like a, a now like a great um, one, like many people's favorite character in the game. They did a really good job with this. And the unfortunate part about this Mario one is it's literally just like, here's a bunch of items. So you can buy them. Which is awesome, but there's nothing like there's nothing really like fun or tied in. There's no like character coming to town or anything you have to do necessarily to get said items. You just go on, you buy them, and then you have fun putting them around your town, I guess. But it's a little bit of a disappointment because I thought they would like I don't know correlate it with the the Mario Day, and it would be something so, because now we're getting to that year point of Animal Crossing where everything is about to be rehashed or they're going to come out with some other big update. And it, that, so that kind of left me wanting more. Um, and cause, and I'll finish with saying this after every animal crossing update, they usually announce what the next one is like, Oh, stay tuned till March for this update. And this one, they didn't have any, anything. So I just wanted to throw out that little PSA that you have uh, till March 31st to get all those Mario items. So everyone just make sure you're you're uh, purchasing well in uh, your nook shops. Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon is also, <laughs> for whatever reason, being delisted then. They're the, pulling it from the nook shop at the end of March. <laughs> nook is shutting it down. Expand a little bit on this Presence Day event. How do you think the events have fared? Because I know last time we talked, we talked a bit about how Pocket Camp was getting a lot of the neat items and events. And it was also kind of slow, slower... <laughs> more expected roll, uh, yeah. roll out, I suppose, for New Horizons. So we're, what's your temperature now? The items were, I mean, the items that they've come out with uh, from Thanksgiving to Toy Day, uh, I don't know if there was a holiday between Toy Day and Festival, but there were like little items for like Valentine's Day. They had like stuff for the, for, like they even like made a nod to the Super Bowl and you can get a couple of like football themed items in the game. But everything has been very new. Uh, and the specifically festival or festival had a really great, like there were all these feathers flying around of diff different colors. And every now and then, like they were very rare. You'd find like a rainbow feather. Mm. Um, and you had to like stack them in different ways. Um, to give to Pav and he would then grant you certain items, but then he would at a random time request that you find only three rainbow ones and bring them back to him. All the items were really cool. And I think for a lot of people, it seems like Nintendo or this team is trying to make items that they know people will use yeah. in a in like a you know a very creative way to expand on their island. And that and with Mario, they only showed on screen five or six items the coins which you can actually run through and then they like disappear um floating uh bricks as well as uh bricks that sit on the ground um a question mark block and then the warp pipes and then i think they showed some like mushroom big giant mushrooms in the background uh, but then the list that they showed when they're like here's how you buy them all was pretty long and i haven't taken a look at it but I can see people just going all out and completely creating insane Mario Islands and, and making a game out of it or something. But it's just, it also feels like the hype is still there, the community's still there, but it's, it, you know, the, a you lot of- the reassurance the, they have a year two plan, it sounds like. I do, I do. We should try to go quickly because we are getting along here. I want to just say, Professor, or excuse me. <laughs> I want to say that Project Triangle Strategy looks really fun. It's like Final Fantasy Tactics or Fire Emblem-ish. Jordan, you and I were messaging a little about this. It looks beautiful, free demo today, made by the Octopath Traveler slash Bravely Default folks. Those games are always like 80% a hit with me, but I am totally excited for this and um, I'm all over it. Star Wars Hunters, yeah, I... we know nothing about, but Jordan, hit it. Oh no, I was just gonna say, love everything but the name. Hope the uh, tentative title changes yeah. to something. I mean, given they have more... Octopath yeah, Traveler and Bravely Default, I have to think whatever name they choose will be somehow worse than Project Triangle Strategy. Skyward Sword announced 
uh, HD. I honestly did not expect this. I figured we get Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, but that would be it. I'm surprised we did not see an announcement for those. I'm sure they will still come, but what is everyone's thought? Because I loved Skyward Sword when it came out, and I'm excited about, just like Jordan, the button controls. Um, do people have any thoughts, Jordan? Uh, all the Zelda announcements were just a complete roller coaster, which I know was I know was their intention, but still hurt. Um, and I'm excited about Skyward Sword. I, uh, as I stated previously, I attempted to play this game so hard, but I just could not get past the controls. I hope that they also cut like most of the dialogue for the uh, Fee character because that was also a hard barrier to entry to this game, and I wanted to play it so badly because I love the story. I'm really here for for all the Zelda lore, um, and I've uh, I've heard great things about the temples in this one, so I'm super pumped to play it. Um, but uh, given that the Zelda 35th anniversary is like days away, um, I hope that there's either additional announcements coming or something. I need like I'm, I'm all the sure. other games to also be available on my Switch if they're not going to give me Breath of the Wild too. I want to hop in here quickly and say, so I was, I'm excited about this game. I'm excited about the control style. I thought it was so ballsy of Anuma. Not only, okay, first of all, if I were planning this thing and he comes out there, I would immediately have that ticker on here saying, Breath of the Wild 2 news coming later this year, immediately. Instead yeah. of like the slow, like I'm sure if I were to watch it again, it's probably 30 seconds before that appears, but it felt like it was minutes long or it's like, is he gonna address it? You know, is he not? I appreciate that he did at least say like news later, but I would have just the second Zelda comes up, quickly put something on the screen saying, Breath of the Wild 2 news later this year. And yeah, in, cause it, it became a kind of unnecessary roller coaster. The um, for Skyward Sword's remaster, this definitely looks... I don't have confirmation on this um, as an industry insider, but uh, Twilight Princess HD was not a beautiful-looking game. Not, not, Don't have to be uh, in the industry probably to claim that. It, the Twilight Princess is a good game, for sure, but it's somewhat of a muddy and brown game, and I was disappointed with Twilight Princess HD, which I enjoyed and played all the way through back on Wii U was disappointed though, that it didn't receive more texture work and updating the assets. It did have little tweaks. Like there are fewer tiers you had to collect in wolf form. And that was nice. But Wind Waker HD had a full from the ground up remake from done from Nintendo internally. Cause they said they were trying to figure out how to use HD assets for uh, Twilight princess. It was done with a contractor. It's Tantalus media. They have done a number of ports in recent years. Uh, really, they're just kind of cranking out ports. None of these ports are really big by any stretch of the imagination. None of them are big uh, remasters. It's like the Mass Effect 3 that came out in Wii U, Deus Ex that came out in Wii U, um, Twilight Princess, the console version of City Skylines, the uh, remaster of Age Empires. It's yeah, not, ex- not extremely ambitious projects in the same way that like Blue Point. Uh, has made for PlayStation. I feel like this is looking very similar. It looks like the same assets, probably just everything running at a higher resolution. Um, and it looks good, but I, I just wonder, like the textures still look a little muddy and bland when Link's like running up the mountain and whatnot. I wonder how poorly this thing is going to age after Breath of the Wild. And what I was going to say is, I can't believe how gussy it was of Anuma to come out and say like, a lot of the ideas here inspired Breath of the Wild, which is like, that is such a stretch. Like, yes, Link can use a glider that he you have no control over. It's simply an animation. Awesome. And there is a stamina wheel, which is the closest comparison. But that is generous. They only, he only did that to bring For people sure. on board who love Breath of the Wild. Like, like Danny, who hasn't played, to be like, hey, this has got... It's got things you may have liked in the the last game yeah. that you were hoping for an announcement. It is easily, easily the most linear, and I love Discovery Sword. Easily yeah. the most linear Zelda 3D adventure, no question. Yeah. It is the complete antithesis of Breath of the Wild. We all attributed Breath of the Wild's successes to being the rejections of the tired things from Discovery Sword, and uh, I thought I <laughs> appreciated it at first because he was like, "It's the la- it's the." You know, it's the final game in the previous style of Legend of Zelda. And I was like, okay, good acknowledgement. And then he's like, but now I'm going to catfish you. Because if you like Breath of the Wild, you're going to be crazy for this 
<laughs> crazy for this uh, bird link. I, yeah, no, I mean, I agree with you all. Like he, uh, Anuma came on screen and I immediately, like my heart rate went from like steady to like, what? Like, I, like the second slow down and you're like, this is it. This is it. He would say it. He would say it. And he even it. says, I'm, I'm Anuma. I am uh, the head of the Zelda team. You may have been. And I'm like, as soon as he said, you may have been, because he said that the last time he made an announcement. Um, he's like, you may have been expecting me to say something about the sequel to Breath of the Wild. And I'm like, okay, so whatever. Um, I fully expect, as far as other Zelda games go, I, this year, I fully expect them to make announcements about um, Wind Waker HD, uh, Twilight Princess. Um, I don't think it's going to happen anymore. But I would truly, truly love some kind of full remake of Ocarina of Time as far as graphics and textures and um, just do do something akin to what they did with um, Link's Awakening. You know, they don't have to make it claymation style, but just do something where it's fully reimagined, but it's the same game kind of thing. I kind of, yeah, but that was I, so fun like, the little dollhouse kind yeah. of claymation-esque things, like yeah. the give a but, little uh, fresh spin, but... Right. Yeah, no, I agree. But Skyward Sword, I remember when I finished Breath of the Wild, it was my first Zelda game, and I was like, I to Matt's point, I was like, Yeah, let me dive in. Like, what's what's another one like that I can play? What's the most recent one? My roommate had a Wii U at the time and and um uh you know Skyward Sword, but he my roommate didn't have Skyward Sword. Um but I was like, Oh yeah, that sounds cool. Actually, I think the first time I met Jordan, we went to the Zelda Orchestra and it was like, Oh, what's this tune that I really, really like? I go, that one's from yeah, Skyward Sword music. too. Really great music. And I was like, Oh man, I really have to play this game now. Um and after watching the gameplay today, it's like I, I do think the frame rate looks good. Obviously, it's the stuff they chose, you know, it's gonna make it look as good as it can. But it's a Wii game, I, it's not too touched up. I think it'll be right. okay. But but I agree that like the textures, I was like, Oh, that's yeah, it shows I, you, you hate to sound like a snob, but like it's just like at this stage, right. if I had played it when it came out, I think like nostalgia could carry me. You know, 3D All Stars came out, and I could dive I'll into Mario. Yeah, I could dive into Mario 64 because I'm like, oh, I'm I know what to expect. I've done this before. I love this for that. But since I've never played it before, it's it's kind of hard for me to like give it that that second chance kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I'm still probably gonna buy it. I'm still probably gonna play it, but um. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I was hoping for a little bit more visually from it. But I'm excited. Give it a game. Give it a go. Yeah. I'm glad they're doing changing the controls because I was nervous that that was going to really lock that game in on the Wii. Yeah. But that, I mean, to me, that was the, that was the big draw. Like, when, when we first came out and their trailer was, like, showcasing this guy, like, pretending he was holding a sword and a gun and a blaster and a golf club, like I, lo- I bought into that really early, and so yeah, finally, give here's Link a gun. <laughs> here's this game that like I can actually use, like Link Link Sword in a more meaningful way than it than it was in um, Twilight Princess or and Link's I- crossbow training when he did get a gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, so I, I I loved it. I I beat the game all the way through, all the way through all the boss dungeons at the very like a, a different mm-hmm. part of the game. The the bosses in this game were phenomenal and the 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 story itself obviously Except for that devoured that you do fight three plus times or whatever that yeah, same yeah. worm like he's spooky he's creepy yeah, he's spooky Oilers. he's got toes he's you got cute toes you, know, you beat him and you move on well you beat him like three times over but yeah yeah i agree it is it it has all of the story that breath of the wild doesn't and i did miss that in breath of the wild i missed those characters in that way so skyward sword has a lot of it and a very chatty sword Oh, yeah, the uh, Zelda Joy Cons, though, that was an exciting was announcement. A... Heaven help us! I was about to say, since we're likely not getting any other hardware this year, um, no, this is going to be how they clown us. Is right. they release these Joy Cons? I'll absolutely prefer them. Two months later, there'll be a Switch Pro. They will not be compatible with. Take it to the bank. That's for sure happening. I 100 percent agree. 100 yeah. percent agree. Splatoon 3 final announcement. Matt, you're our big Splatfest dude here. Uh, I'm the guy. What was your roller coaster? Did you think uh, it was going to be a full game or more DLC like the Octo no. Uh Yeah, so I'll take you through my mindset here. Uh, uh, first of all, right off the bat, I, I couldn't tell until and it was right when they showed the very like Ray in the desert uh, inkling sitting there. Okay, I was going to make this dumb same joke. <laughs> Clearly, that little creature is BB 8. It's a BB 8 <laughs> little. It's a, a BB 8. Uh, it's, it's actually, oh gosh, man, I forgot what, what it's called. 
Yeah. No, 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 no. The the specifically the character that they were showing is um is a uh there's like a Babu uh, Freak. A, Babu Freak. A, <laughs> there's a zombie mode in uh in Salmon Splatoon Run. 2 that's very fun Salmon called Run. called Salmon Run. Babu and that Freak. little guy. Hey, you're supposed to raise your hand before all these. <laughs> um it was really interesting to see that because that that little guy uh, swarms at you with like hundreds mm-hmm. of them, and so now he's like this kind of like companion pet. Anyways, my first take was, oh wow, they're like Splatoon's and Splatoon 2's uh, story mode um, were really fun, and then the Octoling expansion or Octo expansion that came out uh, on on Splatoon 2 was like even more diving into what would like a a full story look like if this wasn't just a multiplayer like online game and it was it was really well done and now when i saw this i thought are they just going full-fledged like halo style but the, you know third person mm-hmm. point of view splatoon game and post apocalypse. she has a bow she, she had a bow that was new tons of old and new weapons uh showed up um like the inksuka uh that that was there also there was a new method of them entering the field which is very cool uh mm-hmm. being blasted in you can kind of control where you're about to approach the map from the start and then ultimately my favorite thing was the music splatoon at, at its core is about it was about music is about like all these different genres of music it's all these little squid teens like loving concerts and things mm-hmm. and literally the final bosses are all musical themes. um and when that music played, right when they started battling, I just was like, oh, my God, yes. And then they showed 2022, and I, all, all my joy just kind of... That was wild. That was wild to me. Out. Like, the, Yeah. I, I'm sure there's plenty of work to do. Like you're saying, it looks like a more expansive story mode. We get to see more of this surrounding Incopolis, and we know from the lore, the first two games, that you know, humanity is not in a good place, and it's kind of, no. you know, uh, the, kind of the natural... Just destruction we've kind of wreaked on the on the planet that's caused right. this evolution and everything falling apart. The um, so that is neat, but yes, especially because Splatoon Two, as we all know, when it came out, where it kind of felt like an extension of Splatoon One, you know, maybe like a repackage of Splatoon One. It grew into be its own thing, but it wasn't a big leap from Splatoon One and came out pretty quickly thereafter. Yep. This visually looks similar. I'm sure there is plenty of work to do, but the fact that we had Breath of the Wild with Two with no news, and then this having news felt like this is a guarantee that this is coming out this year, or felt like that promise. Yeah, because Nintendo hasn't teased a lot of things with far dates. You know, like no, we're still waiting for Metroid Prime Four. We're still somehow waiting for Bayonetta Three, but they never said like Metroid Prime Four 2023. Like it's just been radio silent, which is probably worse. But um, it feels like wow, if Breath of the Wild didn't have anything then it definitely isn't coming out this year. If this had all of this and it's not coming out until 2022. Oh, uh, now yeah. it just, uh, sorry, sorry, Danny, just, I'll throw this in. I'll bounce to you. It just, for me, it was like, they keep doing this where it's like, here's a logo or a trailer. Here's all of games now that we have that we know are coming, but we don't know when. And that includes Metroid, that includes Bayonetta 3, Breath of the Wild 2, and now Splatoon. Um, Danny, for you. I was going to say, uh, with that, but I do appreciate they avoid the other problems of the industry of a cyberpunk saying, hey, here's the game, here's the the month, the date, the time that it's releasing, and then like two weeks before, I hey, just kidding, we gotta delay it. And then they delay it, and they're like, hey, just kidding, we gotta delay it again. And he's like, so I, as much as it drives me nuts that they just throw out the image or the, you know, 40 second trailer and then say nothing else other than more info soon. At least it guides expectations a little bit as far as like we'll know when we know. Like we don't, you know, when we have these biggest games ever that uh over promise and under deliver on both their release dates and their actual content. I'm like, you know what? I'd rather um rather them just keep, you know, I, I do think it's not coming out this year, this calendar year. Um I'm hoping that we do get an actual like real trailer second trailer i should say by the end of the year and some more announcement that it maybe next year makes sense it'll be you know gives them time obviously with the pandemic to develop it and next year is the five-year anniversary from the first one um so maybe that's maybe that's a decent enough time for march 2022 for 
uh, Switch Pro and Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing about all of that would be they'd be recreating the launch of the Switch because in that same year, Zelda, Platoon, a Mario, and Mario Kart all came out. Um, and I, w- I would rather that 2022, like, here's a game that's not coming out this, this uh, fiscal year for us. I, rather, I would have rather that been Mario. Like, show me, tell me Mario Kart 9's coming. Tell me that's coming. I know Splatoon's coming. It, like, it could. It could come out next year, too. It, no, I, I definitely... They, I think it. I think there's a good chance that if, if, especially if there's another Switch, it just that game seems like, you know, j- just give the fans something. At this, it's been seven years or eight or something yeah. like that. Yeah, they could really recreate the launch of the Switch next year and be like, "Hey, Breath of the Wild Two will come out on both Switch One and Switch Two, um, and then the only other game we'll have at launch is Mario Kart Nine. You know, um, and, and it can be really nostalgic to almost five years ago at that point. Um, yeah, they're setting themselves up pretty, I think, if, if all goes well and pandemic thing and the developers are healthy and get the time they need. Team, with that, should we wrap it up? Any last thoughts from anyone? I think we close it on out. I have been Austin Cummings, and thank you for listening to the voice of Danny Tortelli. Good night. <laughs> Matt Schultz. Uh, goodbye. And Jordan Weiner. Good night, everyone. All right, be safe out there. Go Thanks, Nintendo. Mikamo. <laughs> Topia. <laughs> Tomodachi Go Live. Nintendogs. Yeah, where's Nintendogs? When is that happening?